Today on Void Star Lab, we're doing 3D printing. We're doing D&D printing. We are doing 3D and D printing. Humans, elves, and tieflings, my name is Zach Friedman, and welcome to Void Star Lab. This might be hard to believe, but I used to be a nerd. Back in college, I was a dungeon master, and not the fun kind, the tabletop RPG kind. I wrote a custom campaign that saw my players cleave many a knoll in twain, cast fireball with their finger in a keyhole, and fight valiantly against a giant fiendish dire badger while hungover. The players were hungover, the badger was sober. I was just too much of a cheapskate to buy proper minis and maps, so the props and players were Lego mini figures. Here's Jeff's cleric, Waffle's rogue, I mean shadow dancer, Twitch's mustachioed wizard, and Riley's barbarian. Riley actually bought himself a mini, so he stood out a little bit. Unless the enemy was a shark, they were just bits of paper with the creature's name written on them, and the battlefield was an Excel spreadsheet. Well, we are now in the future, so it is time to cast Bigby's Grasping Hand and slap some sense into your DM. For less gold than a single rulebook, you can build an entire army's worth of gratuitously intricate minis. You can populate your battlefield with both inspirational and immersive props, and you can make custom figures for everyone in your party that just oozes personal flair and flavor. You can make all of this yourself on a resin printer, which are surprisingly cheap and easy to run, even if you've never put a single point into use magic device. So let's roll initiative and dive into the fray. Today's episode is sponsored by Loot Studios, your monthly subscription to dozens of ultra-detailed, professionally designed models made by a talented team of CG artists. Nearly every model you see today comes from this month's pack, Orc Conspiracy, which has everything you need to orchestrate orc sighting orc counters. Stay tuned to the end if you're curious, or should I say, if you're curious. I hope you like bad puns, because that's just the tip of the orcsburg. So let's do a quick recap of how 3D printing works. There are two kinds of hobbyist 3D printers, FDM and resin, and they both build up a solid model by adding one thin layer of plastic at a time. FDM machines, like these Prusa Mark 3Ss, feed plastic filament into a heated nozzle and trace each layer out of lines of material. Resin machines, like this Frozen 4K, shine a high-powered projector through a vat of liquid resin to harden wafer-thin layers into an orc-shaped stack. FDM printers are far more common, but if you're going to make intricate prints like these D&D minis, resin printers are the way to go. An FDM printer struggles with the fine details, but a resin printer's limit is the resolution of the projector. This model I'll be using today has a 4K resolution, so it actually prints models about 50% sharper than the iPhone on which you're statistically likely to be watching this video. You start off with a model that you download off the internet, and you prep it with a program called Slicer. The slicer automatically generates supports, those those little scaffolds that brace it as it prints. It hollows out chunky areas to save material, and it formats it for your printer. You pour some liquid resin into the tray, you hit go, and a few hours later, your tiny orcs are fabricated. Give them a bath, snap off the supports, harden them under a UV lamp, and you are ready to roll. A 500 gram bottle of resin costs about 20 bucks and prints like 75 to 100 minis. Resin printers themselves are really cheap too, because they don't have any moving parts. While an FDM printer has motors, belts, drivers, rods, extruders, an SLA printer is really just a UV lamp, an LCD panel, and a single motor to lift the print out of the goo. So you got the printer, what's next? Ask your party, because I guarantee you they have thought this through way more than you have. When you play Skyrim, Fallout, or Cyberpunk, the first thing you do is waste like 15 hours in the character creator. And those are first person games where you never even get to see your own character. Designing your look and expressing yourself is a really important part of these games. And D&D is no D&D different. In fact, it's probably even more so because players can literally do anything. Players put a ton of love and thought into their character's style, and they really put a piece of themselves into their characters. If you have a printer, you can let them put that piece onto the battlefield. So Hero Forge is a well-known way to create custom character models, and you don't have to do any modeling yourself. But Eldritch Foundry is another similar option. In between sessions, your players can customize their looks, they can add their favorite weaponry and gear, and then they can just send you the file. Because of a quirk of how resin printers work, it doesn't matter how many prints you do at once, it always takes as long as the tallest print. So just run off the whole party in one shot. The material is just so cheap, and the process is so simple that when a player claims the Big Bad's blade for their own, and subsequently gets disarmed, you can just print fresh models that show this. 
This adds a ton of flavor for players to discover on each other's models. Like, why does Megan's lizard folk have a grimoire in her belt? Why is Zack's orc warrior's codpiece so damn big? The former is because she's a lizard wizard. The latter is because life imitates orc. By the way, if you have never used minis in your D&D, I highly recommend them over using tokens or markers. Not only can you tell which direction the players are facing and what equipment they're using, you can even print these little trackers to visualize status effects like my personal favorite, On Fire. If you also print some set dressing, it doesn't just make the game more immersive, it makes it easier for the players to tell which obstacles block the square and which are just hard to walk through. But most importantly, it inspires improvised tactics which, let's be honest, are the best part of D&D combat. An enemy is about to outflank your warrior and your bard just threw her last dagger. What's she gonna do? It's a good thing the table is covered in aerodynamic pewter mugs. Another neat idea is hiding puzzles in real life. The players are on the hunt for Percy Pinkpike, who mysteriously vanished during his monthly pilgrimage. The bandits camping out in the ravine said they never saw him pass through, but when you take a closer look at their barrel of weapons, you perceive Percy the Paladin's precious pink pilgrimage polearm. When the minis are only like 20 cents each, you can get creative with these one-off surprises and throw players who are used to just skill checks for a loop. Of course, printing enemies is the fun part, because A, players don't really change their equipment all that often, so you end up using the same minis for a really long time, and B, monsters are cool. Players can size up the enemy's orc equipment at a glance, which means less brain power spent visualizing the battlefield and more creating overcomplicated strategies that force the DM to calculate the range touch modifier for throwing an unwilling celestial monkey, for instance. It's an incredible feeling when the players finish hacking down all the mooks and you get to unveil that super special big bad boss and literally slam it on the table. The players have heard Orgus the Tull's name whispered by townspeople and hollered in war cries, but finally getting to face the orc warmonger head to head will fire anyone up to cut that head off. This goes double for those big showpiece models. These are like big bad dragons that cost like 30 bucks off the shelf, but for you are just like 89 cents of plastic. It turns out that burly orc who just got a free French haircut wasn't actually Orgus, it was Orgug. Orgug lots of bolts is an orc. Orgus the Tall is the specter of a bloodthirsty ancient dragon, and the shaman's just finished invoking his spirit. Fear me, rawr! Oh no! Mercy! Mercy is for the living. Rawr! 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 So where do you actually get models to print? Well, you have lots of options, and you just need to remember three letters, STL. That is a standard format that every CAD and 3D modeling program can output and every 3D printing software can handle. You can grab files at sites like My Mini Factory, called 3D, Things, and even Etsy, and you can also find models on like maker-centric sites like Thingiverse. There are a lot of free STL files out there, but you will need to buy the best ones from the artist, and on these sites, these files actually get pretty or expensive, especially if you're buying a whole campaign's worth. That's why I partnered with Loot Studios, a subscription to dozens of brand new, preposterously intricate models ready to print with a different theme every month. This month, you get everything you need to coordinate an orc-based campaign. There is an orc shaman, there are orc warriors, a rodeo orc on a cow, and there are assorted orc pals like a big-ass dragon and a troll straight out of my comment section. Here are the heroes that can desperately struggle against the impending cat orc closing. You also get a selection of orc architecture, like an orc's tower, a barb orc queue, and a pork cullis begging to be saborctaged. And also there's a werebore. There's, there's like a pork pun in there somewhere. Each set includes heroes, enemies, and props in both 35 and 75 millimeter scale. You also get cool bonuses like paintable busts of the best characters, and even some lore and battle maps to mix into your campaign. You just download it, print it, and die to it, because for Christ's sakes, Jeff, why'd you have to waste all your cure wound spells in the zombies? Like, killing dudes with healing is neat, I get it, you read the rule book, but come on, our wizard could have fireballed them to death, and now I'm bleeding out because I can't roll a goddamn endurance check to save my life! Anyways, it's just $15 a month, links in the description, and it helps support the channel. <laughs> Speaking of filthy skull-wearing savages with green skin, a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting Void Star Lab. We're almost at our very first goal, which is to upgrade this wearable computer and then put the plans online for everyone to become cyborg. Our supremely generous lab assistant supporters are 
in no particular order. Rusty Flute, Anthony Mincarelli, Bill Schuller, Azundo, Varka, Gregory Jones, Olivier Yiptong, Michael Dunn, Taranak, James Berry, Tech, Roger Pinkham, Zanforian, Robert Burris, Daniel Cadwell, and Akalia. Super special, extra juicy thanks to our very first collaborator, I'm Not B Corp. I've hidden his, her, their, or its name somewhere in this episode, so go Easter that egg. Super special thanks to Brooke, the lovely lady behind the camera, and for our dedicated Discord mods, Billy Rubin, My Fair Julie, and Techniac. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope your future campaigns are simply unforgettable.